So, this conference uh, will now be recorded. Well, there you go. I didn't have to announce it. <laughs> Did it for me. So I have to say for legal purposes that this is a recording. And so this can or will be used against you. Just kidding. All right. Let's get started here. Can everybody see my keyboard? Okay. Beaver, can you hear me? Just making sure you guys can hear. Good, we got a thumbs up. Okay. I'm going to start um, by talking about some of the language I'm going to use, some of the words, the vocabulary, so that we're all on the same page. I'm going to use, say, some words that might mean different things to different people. So we're going to find it right now. First thing I want to talk about is the keyboard. Most people don't see the keyboard from that angle, so just we're on the same page. This way is up. These are the high keys. These are the low ones. So when I say up, I'm going this way. When I say down, I'm going this way. Okay, All on the same page there. Now, those of you who have seen something about the notes, we know here we have an A, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This isn't super important. It's just going to help you. Um, know where I am on the keyboard, so we're all on the same page. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Got those keys right there. The other thing you need to know is the difference between a whole step and a half step on a keyboard, okay? When you play notes on a keyboard, you can see how there's all these white keys and all these black keys. When two keys are right next to each other, like these two, or like these two, there's no black key here, so these two are right next to each other, or these two. This is a half step, okay? when they're right next to each other. But if we're gonna skip a key, this is a whole step. See how we skip this black key right here. Whole step, whole step. This is not a whole step, there's no key skipped, okay? You need to know what a half step is. Half step is when we move to the next key, okay? If I go up, half step up, go down, half step down, okay? So we have up on a piano, we have down on a piano, we have full steps, we have half steps. Got it? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, okay, good. Let's get started. We're gonna talk about chords, okay? Chords generally are three or more notes played at the same time. Big chord, three notes, right? This is the chord. Chords, we're gonna call them children, okay? You have a parent, you're a child. Chords are children of something we call a scale, okay? A scale is a group of notes put together. So this is, for example, a C major scale, okay? That's a C major scale, this is a C major chord. A chord is a child of a scale, meaning we build the chord by using the scale. The scale is the parent, that allows us to build the chord. The chord is the child of the scale. Okay. In a scale, you don't have to memorize this. This is just going to kind of set the foundation for you. There, are, In a major scale, there are seven notes. For example, you see again, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Those are the seven notes in a C major scale. Okay, And we can give them their names, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, or we can give them numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, This is the first tone in the C scale. This is the seventh tone in the C scale. To make a chord from a scale, we take tones numbers one, three, and five, okay? So this is tone number one, this is tone number three, this is tone number five. That's how we build a major chord, okay? Don't be too concerned yet, don't worry. Don't be too concerned. We use these tones, one, three, and five, to make a major chord, okay? So this is the C major scale, this is the C major chord. If I were to change scales, I'm going to do an F major scale, okay? Oh, I'm running out of the side of my camera here, okay? This is tone one, this is tone three, this is tone five of an F major scale. There's my F major chord. I use the scale of the parent, the chord becomes the child, okay? Parent, child. Now, this is a little complicated. To have to learn every single scale, all seven tones, and then to figure out which are the tones, numbers one, three, and five, 
can take a little bit of time and it's cumbersome. It's something good to learn, but save that for another time, it's kind of complex. We're gonna do it in a simpler way, okay? We're still gonna use the idea of parent and child. We're gonna make it a little bit easier to memorize these chords. So you can just play the chord without thinking about the scale, okay? So first thing is every major chord has two names, just like you generally have two names. Sometimes you have a middle name, that's cool too, but you have a first and you have a last name. Okay, my first name is Michael, my last name is Hepler. For the C chord, first name is C, last name is major. You have to use both of them so we know what kind of C we're talking about. There's all kinds of different chords. They have all kinds of different last names. So we wanna say C, we wanna say C major, so we know which C we're talking about. Why do we call it C? because we're using tone number one as what we call the root. It's gonna be the very bottom of the, of the chord, okay? So it's a C major, we call it C because we're using the root of C, we call it major because that's the scale. Major means the scale that we're building it from, okay? So F major, I put F as my root, and I play an F major scale using the tone from the F scale, which again, we haven't memorized and that's okay. So when you look at this, or you look at this, or even a G major chord, somebody describe to me what that looks like. This is kind of a weird concept, but think to yourself, what does that look like? If you were to describe that, you didn't have a picture, you had to tell somebody what it looked like, what would you describe that as? I'm playing these three notes right here. Any thoughts? How would you describe that? All answers are acceptable. Do you want like a shape, like a fork, or do you want uh, every other one? What, what comes to your head? What comes to your head? I like how you said a shape. I like that. What else? What are we seeing? Grandma described it with a shape. It looks like an, but like you're playing an E, C, and A instead of. Okay, a... good. Yep, you're naming you're naming the notes. Good. It's a G, D, C. So that's very good. If if somebody didn't know the notes, they could just see a piano. Is there a way you could describe that? Every other one. <laughs> Every other one. That's a great way to describe it. Every other one. What are the color of the notes I'm playing? White, white, white. Oh, <laughs> there it is, white, white, white. So grandma described a, a, a shape and Heber said white, 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 kind of a fork, every other one. The way we're gonna describe this chord is white, white, white. And you think of it as every other one. It has kind of a shape to it, right? It's a shape to that, white, white, white. If I were to play something like this, I just changed the shape a little bit. The shape, maybe we could describe the shape as white, black, white, right? So there's white, 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 here's white, black, white. What are some other shapes we could have? We could probably have a black, 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 every other one, black, black, black. We could probably have a white, black, black. We could have a black, white, white. We could have a black, white, black. There's all kinds of shapes. Can you see the different shapes? When we have these three notes that we can play, we can put them in all kinds of different shapes. Now, the cool thing about the chords is we can group all of our chords into different shapes, okay? There's um, six different shapes that we're gonna group the chords into. We're only gonna learn the first three today, but there's six different shapes. And the first shape is the one we just talked about, white, 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 okay? There are three chords that use the white, white, white shape. They are C major, F major, G major, okay? C major, F major, G major, white, white, white. So all you have to remember is the name, C, first name, C, last name, major, and that's the root. We put it in there, C, I can play it. I don't need to know what these two are. I don't need to remember those notes. That's okay for right now, just to do this. C major, I wanna play an F major, it's white, white, white. I wanna play G major. It's white, 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 okay? So I can play those three chords. 
I know. All I needed to know was the first name, last name, and its shape. That's all I need to know. Three chords in that shape group. We're going to call it shape group number one. Call it white, white, white. Shape group number one, okay? Second shape group. Shape group number two. We're going to augment the shape a little bit. We're going to call it white, black, white, okay? So it's going to be chords that look like this. Like this. Like this. There are three major chords in this group, okay? And they are D major, again, first name. See how the root, the bottom tone is a D? A major, E major, bottom tone is an E, and A major, bottom tone is an A. So we have two shape groups. Shape group number one, white, 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 CFG. Shape group number two, white, black, white, D. Well, I should do them in order, I guess, but. D, E, A. Okay. Now that one can you can remember it by thinking of the letters A, D, and E. Aid, like Gatorade. Shape group number two is Aid. Okay. Okay, so you do like this. A, D, E. So you spell it Aid. Shape group number two. And then the last shape group we're going to learn, at least for the moment, shape group number three, is uh, the inverse of shape group number two. Shape group number two is white, black, white. Shape group number three is black, white, black. Okay, now we're playing this black key on the bottom, which we call D flat. D flat major, okay? E flat major and A flat major. One more time, D flat major, E flat major, and A flat major. So it's the same letters as shape group number two. We use A, D, E. All we did was, remember that half step? We took, for example, D major chord. We took everything and we moved it down one half step. Take the D, go down a half step. Take the F sharp, go down a half step. Take the A, go down a half step. Everything went down a half step. Okay? Three shape groups, shape group number one, white, white, white. Shape group number two, white, black, white. Shape group number three, black, white, black. We got it? Any questions? No? Okay. Okay. So think about those for a second. C, F, and G, white, white, white. A, D, and E, white, black, white. A flat, D flat. E flat, black, white, black. How many is that? That's only nine. That's only nine. We're supposed to learn 24. Okay, the next ones are gonna be super easy because we're just gonna build off of the nine we just learned, okay? You know C, we're gonna learn three more that sit using C major as the base, okay? So let's start with one we call minor. I think we've all heard that term before. We have C major and we have C minor. How do we get a C minor chord? Again, first name, last name, right? First name C, last name minor. How is a C minor chord different than a C major chord? Remember that half step I taught you about? Take your middle note, okay, and drop it. We're going to go down the piano, drop it a half step. Okay, and then play your C major chord with that middle note down a half step. There you go. That's C minor. So C major, C minor. C minor has what we call a flat third. Remember, tone number three drops a half step. C minor. So can you guess how we get an F minor? Drop the middle one, half step. How do we get a G minor? Drop the middle one, half step. We can do the same thing for D. How do we get a D minor? Drop the middle one, half step. How do we get an E minor? Drop the middle one, a half step. How about an A minor? Drop the middle one, a half step. 
And then we do the same thing with D flat. Drop the middle on a half step. Same thing with E flat. And the same thing with A flat. Does that make sense? So we'll go over this again. Shape group number one. Shape groups are for major chords. Shape group number one, we have three chords, C, F, and G. The shape is white, white, white. Shape group number two, we have three chords. Shape is white, black, white. The chords are A, D, and E, A. Shape group number three, black, white, black. Three chords are A flat, D flat, and E flat, okay? So you know those nine, but then you learn how to make a minor from each major, major. okay? Does that make sense? Any questions? Nope, okay, good. Minor's easy. Let's talk about another kind of chord. It's called diminished. Now, who knows what diminished means? Means short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in a matter of speaking, it really does. Yep. Diminished means short. It means to make smaller. Okay. So we have our C major chord again. We're going to start with shape group number one, white, white, white. C major. To make minor, we took the middle one, the three, and we dropped it a half step. To make it diminished, we take three and five, both of them. And we drop them a half step. And there's your diminished C diminished chord. So you start with your right white, and then you drop them a half step. Okay. That's a diminished. Now you can think the reason I talked about the name of diminished to make smaller, kind of look at what the chord does. It's here, and then we drop them chord kind of shrunk a little bit, right? We diminished the chord. We brought all the notes a little closer together. It's kind of how you can remember diminish. Bring all the notes closer together. We can do the same thing with F. Now some of these get a little weird because we don't always move from a white key to a black key or a black key to a white key. So F diminished. You bring them both down a half step. You're still playing a white key on the top because remember there's no black key between C and B. So a half step goes to B. F major, F diminished. Okay, then we have G major, G diminished. Okay, how about D? D major, D diminished. Drop three and five. Keep that. Keep that root right where it is. Drop three and five. E major, E diminished. A major, A diminished. You kind of hear how they all have kind of the same sound, right? And then the last one was A flat major, A flat diminished. D flat major, D flat diminished. Whoa. <laughs> e flat major, E flat diminished. Okay, so rules, go over the rules again. We start with the C major chord. We remember our shape groups, they're for, they're for majors, okay? To get a minor, we drop the third a half step. To get a diminished, we drop the third and the fifth, the top two, down a half step. Now we have a diminished chord, okay? Now we're going to talk about another kind of chord called augmented. Has anybody ever heard the word augmented before? That's kind of a weird word. Augmented means, it actually, the specific meaning of augmented, a lot of people think it means to change. It actually means to change by increasing. Augmented means to increase, change by an increase, okay? So let's start with our, our root, C major. To make an augmented chord, take your fifth, take the top tone and move it up half step. We moved it up because remember we augmented by increasing. Okay, augmented is changed by increasing. So instead of making our chords smaller by diminishing, we actually made our chord 
bigger by augmenting. There's your C augmented chord, C augmented. So take your fifth, your top tone, and move it up a half step. Okay, F augmented. G augmented. You can do D augmented. E augmented. And A augmented. Okay, and then you can do the same thing with the flats. D e flat augmented. E flat augmented. Just moving that top note up a half step. And e flat augmented. Okay, and it all comes from the major position. We use major to define everything else. C major, we want to make it minor, drop the third. We want to make it diminished, drop the third and the fifth. We want to make it augmented, raise the fifth. Okay? Does that make sense? We all on the same page. Okay, how many chords have we learned? 32. 32? Yeah. Wait. 3, 6, 9 times 4 is 30. No, 36. Sorry. 36. Yeah. I was waiting for all you mathematicians to get on board there. Uh, my, grandkids just, my grandkids just believe everything I say. Because <laughs> <laughs> remember, we learned nine original chords. C, F, and G. We learned A, D, and E. We learned A flat, D flat, and E flat. That's nine. But then we did major, minor, diminished, and augmented. So you just learned 36 chords. How's that feel? Why are we learning chords? Why is this even cool? Because they're good to learn. Okay, I like the answer. A lot of faith in me right there. Because they're good to learn. Absolutely. We learn chords because chords are the base, basic part of music along with the scale, right? The scale is the parent, the chord is the child. Generally, we don't play just scales and songs. We use the scales to build a chord and we play the chord in a song. So when you put chords together in a row, you start to get some kind of song. So let's just use um, the shape group number one as an example. What are the three chords in shape group number one? C, F, and G, right? Can you make those into a song? Kind of sounds like a little bit of a song, right? But maybe it needs a little bit of a melody, something going on up top. I did was use those chords in shape group number one C, C, F, right and then I just played something up top but you can see the chords the chords are the bass part of that song without the chord you just have a melody chords are what really make up music now, where's my book here? An interesting thing with chords. Actually, before I show you that, let me show you this. So we're all on the same page. We've learned major, minor, augmented, and diminished. Now, when you're reading music, people will notate chords and they'll put the name of the chord, like C, but you need first name, last name, right? You can't just have a C because then you're saying, am I playing a C? Am I playing a C? you don't know so they have a way to distinguish which chords are which okay let's see if this works very well oops i'm backwards there we go <laughs> it's hard when my screen shows everything in reverse okay major they generally just show the letter so if you see a letter think major 
first, all the shape groups that we learned, right? Minor, they usually show minor by putting an M-I-N or a small M after the chord. So if you see a C and a small M, think C minor. You think, oh, shape group number one, drop the third, okay? You don't even have to know the names of the notes. Diminished, let's see if I can get that a little better. Diminished, they put the name, first name of the chord, and then they usually put a D-I-M or a circle that's kind of up to the top of the letter. That means diminished, okay? And then augmented, they'll put A-U-G or they'll put a plus sign. Plus sign, why? Because augmented means to change by increasing, right? Augmented means to go up. And why is this important? Why do we need all these signs? What is this telling us? Sometimes people write music and they only put chords in their music. They don't put notes for the bottom hand, okay? Like this song here, Wayfaring Stranger. All you see are one line of notes, and then look above the notes, you can see the letters. Okay, A, small m, well that means A minor. D, small m, that means D minor. E, E major, right, because there's nothing after it. A minor, F major, D minor, F major, E major, A minor, D you know all of these chords. We've learned all of these just today, right? So when you see the chord, you play that. You think, what shape group is that? Do I need to lower the third? Do I need to lower the third and the fifth? Do I need to augment? Do I need to raise the fifth? So all they would do is give you this music here and you'd be able to play a song because you'd be able to play the chords. Chords, A minor, you see this here? E minor, E major, A minor. Okay. So what that, that I'm telling you is this is the root part of the song, the basic part of the song. So when you play the song, A minor, D minor, E major, A minor. You see that? And all I did was play the right hand that they had written down. A minor. D minor, D major, A minor. All I did was play those chords that we have learned. All those chords we learned today. Now you guys can actually do this because you might not have this book, but you know what you do have is you have a children's songbook. Who has a children's songbook? Pulling it out right now. Here it comes. Open up to any song in there, Kenzie. Do you see the letters? See the letters on top of the music? No. Like the name? Yeah, just the letters, the chord names. Yep, I see in there, I see an F, I see a C, I see a D minor, I see a G7. Oh, we haven't learned about sevens yet. I'll have to teach you sevens at some point. But you get the general idea, right? Can you see the letters? Yeah. So. You don't actually have to play the left hand. You can just play the chords. Yep, yep, you're getting the idea. So as you're playing the right hand melody, whatever it's telling you to play in the right hand, you play the left hand chords. How do you know uh, when, you're, when you want to write your own song? Sorry, let me pull this up. How do you know what to play? Well, it starts with your chords. You need to learn all these chords. It starts with your scales, but you build your chords from your scales. Make sure I have. Okay, so quiz, just to make sure we're all on the same page. What does it mean when I say augmented? What are you supposed to do to a chord? Increase it. 
increase your fifth. Yep, how far? Half step. Half step, good. What does it mean to, when I say diminish? You wanna diminish your cord? It means to shorten the cord. Right, and what do we shorten? Three and five, half step. Three and five, half step. So the top two come down a half step, right? And what do we say when we mean minor? We mean a child that's under 18. <laughs> Third note, half step down. Third note, half step down, right? So anytime somebody says something like that, they say, oh, that's a G major chord. That's a G augmented chord. You know exactly what they're talking about now. You can do all those. Does that make sense? Do you remember the three shape groups? What's the shape of shape group number three? White, white, white. Shape group number one is white, white, white. Oh, shape group number three. You're good. Shape group number three is? White, black, black, black white, black. Black, white, black. Black, white, black. And what are the three chords in shape group number three? A minor, no. <laughs> A flat, D flat, E flat. Good. That's exactly right. We remember to put major in there, though, so we know what we're talking about. A flat major, D flat major, E flat major. Perfect. Somebody tell me the shape of shape group number two. It's white, black, white. White, black, white. What are the three chords in shape group number two? A, D, and E. Major. So it's A major. Yep, A major, D major, E major. That's exactly right, okay? So when you're thinking of playing these chords, you don't have to think to yourself, what are all the notes in an A major scale? Does that require you to think? Right, and then have to name all of them, and then think, all right, what's one, three, and five in that? That's an A, that's a C, that's a D. All you need to think about is A major is in shape group number two, and it's white, black, white. Okay, so it's going to be a lot quicker to think up how to play that chord. So if you're looking in the children's sound book, or you're looking in a book like the one I showed you, they're called fake books, you can just play it. You just have to think of what shape group. Oh yeah, that's the shape group. I need to play it, okay? So one thing you can do if uh, if you're interested, if you don't, I don't know, some of you might already have one, but I can send you an example of what they call the lead sheet or a fake book that um, you can use C, F, and G, I think are the only chords. And you play a song because all it's going to be C, F, and G, and those are Y, 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 and those are really easy. So I can send those to you so you can try that out. Um, because we have some extra time, let's learn some more shape groups. Okay? So we know three, there's only three more, and it's going to cover every chord on the piano, at least every three note chord on the piano. Okay? So we have Y, 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 we have White, black, white, we have black, white, black. Somebody tell me another shape we could have with three tones. White, white, black. White, white, black. Yep, very good. Unfortunately, there are no white, white, black major chords. I know, weird, huh? It's absolutely a shape you can have on the piano, but you never get a major chord out of it. All you ever do is get a minor or a diminished or something else funny, but never a major chord. Kind of funny. It's a good one, though. Give me another combination that maybe we could see. Black, black, black. Black, black, black. Let's go to it. This is There's one, one of these... Uh, I don't want to confuse everybody. There's just one black, black, black major position on the piano. I guess I should show my piano. I'm sorry. Right there. Okay. It has two names. That's where it gets kind of weird. It's F sharp major, but it's also G flat major. 
Yeah. It's an it's a chord we call enharmonic. Enharmonic. Harmonic meaning sound. N meaning the same. Enharmonic sounds the same. So F sharp major sounds the same as G flat major. We just give them two names because we like to make things confusing. Okay, F sharp major, G flat major. There's two chords in that shape group, and it's this black, black, black shape. That's shape group number four. Okay, there's only two chords: F sharp, G flat. That makes it pretty easy. Okay, shape group number five is white, black, black. And there's only one major chord, it's B, B major, white, black, black. Okay, and then in shape group number six, we have black, white, white, which is B flat major. Yeah, B flat major. Which makes sense because if B is white, black, black, then B flat is probably black, white, white. Okay, those are the six shape groups, and we just named all the major chords. There, there are some other major chords out there, but they're all enharmonics. So we're not going to worry about it too much. Things like C sharp major and C flat major. Um, you probably will never see those seven sharps and seven flats. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Um, so let's remember those ones we just learned. Black, black, black. Shape group number four. F sharp, G flat. White, black, black. Shape group number five, which is B. B is white, black, black. And then the other B is black, white, white. So you can remember the Bs as shape groups five and six because they're almost the same thing, right? And they are the only chords in their shape group. Black, black, black is the... Black, black, black was F sharp or G flat. Or G flat, yeah. Yeah. We have white, black, 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 white, white, B flat. So, you know those three. Those are easier because there's far fewer chords in each one. Just two in here, one here, and one here. Now, what can you do with all that? You can make your minors. You're diminished and you're augmented with those as well, right? So we have to remember, if we're playing this funny one, with black, 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 how do we make it minor? Drop the third. How do we make it diminish? Drop the third and the fifth. How do we make it augmented? Raise the fifth. Shape group number four. How about B, which is shape group number five? Make it minor, drop the third. Make it diminished, drop the third and the fifth. Let's make it augmented. And let's, oh, that's the last one. <laughs> and let's do the same thing with B flat. Let's make it minor, let's diminish it, let's augment it. How many chords did we just learn? Thirteen times six. Who can do it? Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Nope. Good guess though. Forty-five. Wait, no. There's three times four is 12, uh, 48. Hey, right. we learned three new, three new chords and four of each, so that's 12 more plus the 36, 48. Yeah, so it would be your, so we learned 13 chords, three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, times the six shape groups is kind of what we're looking at. There's six shape groups, and then there's 13 chords in all. So 13 times six, yep. Which yep. is? 48. There we go. That'd be, what do I do? Yeah, okay, perfect. 
but I didn't understand. Sorry, say it again. Did you say 13 times 7? 13 times 6. Yes, 13 times 6. So why isn't that 70? That's not right. Did you say 78? 13 times 6 is 78. Where do we get that? You're, you're, you're right about that. You're, you're right about that. Sorry, I'm just counting up. I don't know how I got to 78, though. It shouldn't be 13 times 6. There's only one here, and there's only one here. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Not times 6. And <laughs> there are six shape. There are six shape groups, but the 13 chords make up the six shape groups. So I'm going to do 13 times four. Yeah. I was like, there shouldn't be a 78. It's 13 times four because we learned 13 chords in six shape groups, but we learned four ways to play them. We learned major, minor, diminished, and augmented, right? Which is 52. We learned 52 chords. Now, does it feel like you know 52 chords? Was it that difficult? It's not too hard, right? You have to know the, the patterns behind it. You have to know the shape groups, the six shape groups, which are white, 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 black, white, black, white, black, 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 white, black, 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 white, white, right? You know the six shape groups, and then you can break it down to the chords that are in each shape group, and then you can break it down to how you build the different chords from your major chord, right? You start with your major, you can make your minor, you can make your diminished, you can make your augmented, okay? Now, as a, let me see, so real quick. My mouse is dying. Okay, there we go. Okay, now one thing I want to point out is we play these chords in what we call root position. Remember what I said about the root? It being the bottom tone of the chords you play? So C major and root position. Why do we say root? Because remember on a, on a keyboard, all your notes kind of repeat themselves, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They repeat as they go up. So that means if I have a C major chord here, I can play up here, and I can play up here, and I can play up here. I can continue to play all the way up the piano. But I can also rearrange those notes. So if I play C, E, T, remember I'm playing it, it looks like this. What if instead of playing the C on the bottom, I put the C on top of the chord, like this? Now we talk about it in root position because this is the shape that's easy to remember, okay? White, white, white shape. If you look at D major, white, black, white. You want to remember this shape. But once you remember these three tones, you can do what we call invert them. You can take D and you can put it on top. So now D is on top. So it's the same form, it's white, black, white. But we just put D on top. And this is called inversion. And you can do it one more time, right? You can do D, you can do one inversion, you can actually do one more inversion before you end up right back where you were, right? We're taking the bottom note, we're putting it on top. Taking the bottom note, we're putting it on top. Taking the bottom note, putting it on top. We just invert the chord. Now, why is that interesting? Oops, bumping the camera here. Why is it interesting to invert chords like that? Well, you can get a very different sound, right? So if I play, C major, A minor, F major, D major. Right? Nice song. Sounds familiar? Just playing C major, A minor, F major, G major. You know all three of the, or all four of those, right? What if I wanted to make it sound a little bit different? Okay? I'm going to play C major, but instead of playing A minor right here, I'm going to invert A minor, and I'm going to put the A on top, okay? 
So to go from C major to A minor, I'm just gonna move my pinky up. Okay, because I just inverted my A minor, so I stayed right here. And instead of playing F major right here, I'm gonna put the C on the bottom. So I'm gonna play F major right here. Okay. And then instead of playing G major right here, I'm gonna put the D on the bottom. So I'm gonna play it right here. Okay. So I'm still gonna play C major, A minor, F major, G major, but I'm gonna invert some of them. So instead of this, I'm gonna end up with this. Different sound, right? Same chords, different sound. This is why we use inversions. Because you can play it, start with this, and then build in your inversions. Let's do one more inversion. It was just those same four chords, right? Same four chords over and over again. All we did was invert them. We kept taking the bottom note, we put it on top. Taking the next bottom note, put it on top. So if you know all these chords, you know all the shape groups, all six shape groups, and then you know how to move them from major to minor, from major to diminished, from major to augmented, and then you'll learn how to invert them. Think of how many different chords you just now know. Somebody do the math for me. That would be 52 times three different inversions. Six. 156. 152. Uh, two. 52 times, oh, yeah, that's right. Yep, okay. So that's, today you just basically learned 152 chords. That's, that's kind of exciting, right? The trick is to be able to play them quickly. So this is where the practice comes in. This is where that song comes in that I'm gonna send you where you just think, I need to learn how to get the idea of C up on the paper to right here on the keyboard, right? C on the paper right here on the keyboard. But it's not too bad if you remember your shape groups and then you remember how to go from major to minor, to diminished, to augmented. Remember, you can, I, I um, inverted my majors, but you can invert your augmented, right? Get all those really kind of cool, unique sounds. You know, augment your minor, your diminished. And all we're doing is playing chords. All you did was play chords, okay? Any questions? If this is off and not along with what you're teaching, then you can skip it for now, but when I'm trying to play the guitar, I see like an F6, and it's nowhere on the chord chart. I don't know what it is. Yeah, love the numbers. So what they start to do after you know your major, your minor, your diminished, and your augmented, the next kind of chord they build is to do more than three notes. So we started with the three note chord. Generally, the next one you learn is something they call a seven. And if you remember, I talked at the very beginning about scales. There's seven tones in a scale. When it says something like C7, you're going to play the seven. Right? That's what that means. Now, sevens are funny. If it just says C7, it's what they call a common seven, which actually means play a flat seven. Okay? So if you just see C7 or A7, it means a common seven, which is a flat seven. If they want you to play the actual a flat seven. Yeah, so I'm playing a B, so when I'm playing C, I'm playing a B flat, because that would be my flatted seventh tone. 
So if you see something that says C7, they want you to play C, E, G, and a B flat. So that's tone one, three, five, and then you're flat at seven. So that's what they call a common seven. If you ever see a C large M seven, C major seven, that's the only time you play the actual major seven tone in the scale. So when you start to play sevenths and sixths and ninths and thirteenths, you do need to really start to understand um, the notes in the scale. You can't get away with just shape groups. Shape groups will get you most of the way there, but you have to start understanding the notes in the scale themselves. So when it says C7, you're playing a common seven. When it says C major seven, you're playing the major seven tone. So when you're playing so six, it says six, do you play the sixth tone? Correct. And again, these also get augmented like crazy. So they're playing like this. They're playing like this. And yeah, when you start adding numbers, ninths, you know, thirteenths, they they start to uh, stop playing other tones. Uh, it gets kind of crazy. But sevens aren't too bad. You you can also have with your sevens, you have the same thing where you can make them minor, you can make them diminished, and you can make them augmented. Um, but it gets a little weird. So C common seven, C minor seven, C diminished actually double flats the seven. Which is weird, I know. It's deeper music theory. But, so when you see those numbers, they're just referring to a note in the scale. They're referring to the sixth to the seven, generally the, the common seven is what they call it. So if you know your sevenths, if you know your major, minor, diminished, augmented, and sevenths, you can play like every chord there is in the ch children's songbook. So if you know your scales well enough to where you can play an A, major seven, right, your D seven, and you can kind of hear the seven. It has that kind of bluesy sound to it. Right? Um, so if you play your sevens, you can play every chord there is in the children's songbook. I don't know. I mean, maybe they sometimes throw in a six every now and again, but. Thank you um, very much. There's something else with the sevens, I was going to say. What was it? I don't remember. It might come back to me. Any any other questions? I know seventh was kind of above and beyond, but any so other why questions? Do they, why do they choose to write music on chords as opposed to just doing notations? Yes, good question. Um, it's so it's to allow for I don't know if you want to say freedom of expression because if they write it in a chord, I can go ahead and play the chord. But if I know that they're playing a C major and an F major, I can kind of do whatever I want with that chord. I don't need to play it all together. I can break it up if I want. Right? Break up the F. So if all they do is give me a chord, they're basically telling me, do what you want in a C major chord. F major. It's a style of writing that... Um, is used a lot in jazz music um, because jazz musicians aren't too particular about the exact notes you play. <laughs> so they'll basically say, I feel like this is a C minor seven and uh, that's the sound I want. So play a C minor seven and then here's kind of the melody. And do an F minor seven. So it allows you a lot of expression when you play. And the idea is to, especially again in jazz, is that the musician isn't just playing notes, they're a musician. They are creating music as they play. So lots of times when you listen to jazz music, it's not the same every time you hear the same group. They'll sound a little bit different, they'll do different things. 
that's generally the idea behind writing down the chord. The other one is some people like to just be able to get ideas down really quickly. And lots of times the melody is the most expressive part of the idea. And they're like, well, I know it goes with uh, an A major chord. I just want to remember the melody. I'm going to write down A major so I know it's an A major there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think it's good to know. Yeah, and, and I guess the, sorry, go ahead. Oh, and I. Yeah, we're, we're good. Okay, I guess the other side of that is guitar music. Not so much for piano, but um, on a guitar, they'll just write down a chord because if you've ever read, sight read guitar notes, it's exceptionally annoying <laughs> when people actually write down the notes for guitar music. So hardly anybody writes down notes for the guitar. They'll just give you chords to play, unless it's a melody. They'll write down a melody as notes sometimes, but they'll just write down a chord that you play the chord however you want, strum it however quickly or however slowly you want to strum it. Um, so guitar is very common to just put down the chord name. Good. Any other questions? Do you guys feel like you could go out and uh, be musicians now? <laughs> no way. It takes practice. So what you got to do is you've got to practice these shape groups. You got to think to yourself um, every day, what are these shape groups? Um, buy yourself a fake book. They call them fake books. That just has a melody and it has the chords written above it. Now, you can sometimes find them cheaper if you buy yourself a guitar book. Because the guitar books generally just have a line of melody with uh, chord names on top. And those are really good fake books. But if you learn how to do that kind of stuff, um, I don't know, you could probably do something kind of fun. Oh, let's just change how noisy that was. Just playing C major. know those chords right you know c you know f you know g it's like no it's not gonna happen <laughs> so again if you don't need all that stuff going on but you play your c major chord f major c major g major and if all you want to do is play a major scale i'll play here so you can see it think you can do that and you just wrote yourself a song C major F major G major that's simple okay no other questions I think we're good thanks guys thanks Michael thank you thank you Michael it was wonderful thank you hey thank you. you guys have a good night you too, hey, you too. we'll see ya yeah we'll see you in the F major <laughs> 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 yeah.